Coming up, a James Harden triple-double wasn't enough for the Nets to win at home. This is Locked On Now. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are Locked On Now. You're listening to Locked On Now NBA, local experts on the biggest stories around the hardwood. I am your host, Kim Becker, and thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. Our Locked On NBA hosts are here to help break down everything from Thursday. Let's start in Brooklyn, where the Sixers and Joel Embiid were too much for the Nets in our biggest game. The biggest game. The Brooklyn Nets lost for the first time since their pandemic break by falling at home to the Sixers. Joel Embiid scored 34 points as Philly pulled away in the final minutes. And Locked on Nets explains why Brooklyn lost despite Kevin Durant's return to the lineup. And a good night from James Harden. Doug Norrie, Locked on Nets here coming at you following a 110-102 loss to the Philadelphia 76ers at home for the Nets. They struggle with Joel Embiid all night on the defensive end. They waste a triple-double by James Harden, 33 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists. Uh, in a game that this one you know, might come back to bite them a little bit later, the offense really stagnated late at just the worst time. They had trouble with spacing, trouble getting up good shots against the Philly team, who that's usually their struggle, but the, the uh, tables were turned in some respect in this game. Things got a little chippy at the end between Joel Embiid and Kevin Durant as well. We are going to be breaking down the whole thing over on Locked on Nets. Head on over there. Check it out. The Cleveland Cavaliers suffered an embarrassing loss on the road and their biggest margin of de defeat this season to the Washington Wizards. Locked on Cavs is in with how Washington made it look so easy against Cleveland on Thursday. Hey, Chris Manning here from the Locked on Cavs podcast. After the Cavs just lost to the Washington Wizards in a 17-point defeat, that is Cleveland's biggest loss of the season to date. And it comes on a night where they were without Ricky Rubio for the first time this year as he was out with his ACL injury, and they were also without Darius Garland, who was in the league's health and safety protocols. Without those two guys, a lot more pressure on Evan Mobley, who did have 20 points, but the ball didn't move as well, and the Cleveland offense just never really got going. It appears, though, that reinforcements could be on the way. Rajon Rondo is reportedly coming in a trade from the Los Angeles Lakers that could be finalized on Friday. It could give them an upgrade over Kevin Pangos as a secondary guard behind Darius Garland. We'll see how this goes. The Cavs are already back in action tomorrow on New Year's Eve against Atlanta. Could still be shorthanded then, even though they are getting some guys back from health and safety protocols. But tricky times for Cleveland, a tough loss for them, even if it seems like some reinforcements are on the way. For more, check out Lockdown Cavs on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. The Magic played the Bucks in Orlando for the second time in three days on Thursday and lost big for the second straight time as well. Lockdown Magic tells you why Orlando wasn't able to learn from the first loss in this rematch. This is Philip Rossman, right, the host of Locked On Magic here from the Amway Center as the Orlando Magic fall to the Milwaukee Bucks once again. An 18-point game, 136-118. to 118. Very similar game to the one that we had Tuesday night where uh, the Bucks really were in control for much of the first half. Orlando just kind of struggling to keep in it, but never really quite out of it. Orlando was able to tie the game this time, though, in the third quarter. Another fantastic third quarter run. Great adjustments from the Orlando Magic. Just better energy overall to get themselves back in the game. But Milwaukee is Milwaukee for a reason, and Orlando is Orlando for a reason. Orlando is still playing with so playing so shorthanded and just without so many guys. The benches were really the difference. Milwaukee took the lead early in the first half when the benches came in late in the first, early in the second. DeMarcus Cousins with a huge difference there in the third quarter, late in the third quarter, to give the Bucks again another 12-point lead. Orlando kind of kept it within shouting distance. Milwaukee never could quite rest, could never get easy. And to some extent, that's a good thing for this Magic team, especially as undermanned as they are. They don't give up. They keep fighting. They keep playing hard. They keep finding guys to play well, whether it's Franz Wagner, whether it's Wendell Carter, whether it's even Moritz Wagner off the bench getting to the foul line. Orlando was able to keep themselves in it, but ultimately too many mistakes. The Bucks simply too good right now for this Magic team to defeat. So the Orlando Magic fall in their final game of 2021. We'll have a lot more coming up on Locked On Magic later on. That's a wrap for us. Thanks so much for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. For more on the association and your favorite team, make your second listen Locked On NBA and your team's Locked On podcast. 
I'm Kim Becker. This has been Locked On Now. Locked On, your team every day.